Uh, this is important. This is a fight against hatred, against hate, against anything that's oppressive. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Say his name! George Floyd! 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 But I do feel very strongly about the fact that great men have been disenfranchised for a long time and have not been able to sit in high places politically or on other levels because of color. But this has had great psychological ramifications, not only for the Negro community who has had many reversals over the last couple of years because the racism which permeates American life from top to bottom in, the, in, in very subtle ways and in very aggressive, obvious ways, the Negro has paid a terrible price for this. But somehow, uh, you'll find that racism in its subtlest and its most uh, evil sense has worked its way deep into the, in, in, into, the, into the fiber of the hearts and minds of many men and women. And the reason I hang around is to make sure that uh, in my old age, if I live to see it, that uh, I will be able to say that in my lifetime I, I did all that I could with what was at my disposal because I would hate for my children to look at me and to say, uh, where were you during the moment of the great decision? These past couple of weeks, I've been thinking about a couple of incidents that have happened to me that I haven't forgotten, but I have just brushed off over, t over time. When I was maybe 13, 14 years old, I went with my brother to Margate, which is a seaside town. We'd just gotten out of the train, and I was just looking around while my brother was getting an ice cream. To my left, there was a couple of white guys, and they had Coke cans. They threw the empty cans on the floor and then carried on walking. And next to them was a policewoman and a police man. When my brother had his ice cream, we started to walk in the same direction. And then someone was calling my brother, and they said he should pick up the cans. They had seen him throw the cans on the floor. It was the policewoman saying this. And I said, that can't be right because we've only just come this way now and the people who threw the cans are way ahead over there. You should have seen this. This was my first ever encounter with the police and I was scared. And my brother looked at me and he says, I don't want to do it because I didn't throw it on the floor so why should I pick it up? And I told him, just pick it up, it's fine. And he said no because he didn't throw it on the floor. And the policewoman kept on saying, I saw you throw it on the floor. Through my fear, I just said, look, you need to pick it up. And he did, and he put it in the trash. The thing that I've never forgotten about that incident is the fear that I felt when the police people approached me, the confusion I felt when they said it was my brother who threw the cans on the floor because I knew that they would never have seen it being us because we were nowhere near it when it happened. And also the guilt I felt after telling my brother to pick it up. And to me, it was more than just picking up a can that was thrown on the floor. It was me thinking about why were they targeting us when clearly it wasn't us and we didn't do anything wrong. I'll tell you what freedom is to me. No fear. I mean, really, no fear. If I, if I could have that half of my life, no fear. Lots of children have no fear. That's the closest way, that's the only way I can describe it. That's not all of it. But it is something to really, really feel. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just because I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Did you want to see me broken? 
bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh as if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words, you can cut me with your lies, you can kill me with your hatefulness, but just like life, I rise. The second incident is when I was in a gym a few years later. I just finished taking a shower. I went to my locker and I was, had my locker open and I was sitting on the bench right in front of my locker. And one of the second women came out of the shower and looked at me and I looked at her. She went back toward the showers and then uh, knocked on the shower door that the other woman was in and said, your locker is open and somebody could come and steal all your things. And the woman came out of the shower and looked at the locker and she said, that's not my, that's not my locker, that's not my things and went back into the shower. I was watching this happen and I thought, she's clearly seen me in front of the open locker. Why would she go back to the shower and tell this other woman this? And I said, it's my locker. It's my things. That's why I'm sitting in front of my locker. And she looked at me stuttering her sorries to me and said that she never saw me. And I said, but you looked at me before you went into the shower and told the lady and then her stuttering and her sorries. And then she laughed. from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling and bearing in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the hope and the dream of the slave, and so.